am a dog mum. That means I have a dog, and I consider my dog to be my child. In September, we nearly ran out of dog food. Now, if any parents are in the crowd, you know that there is a really scary feeling that builds inside of you when you feel you cannot feed your child. And whenever I feel fear, whenever I think we feel fear or we do not have answers, we seem to summon forces from outside of us. I mean, I, I don't look internally, I'm trying to, but I've started, I, I automatically look externally. So I pick up my phone and I summon Google, because Google solves all my problems. Existential or dog food wise, whatever. So I, I type into Google seven letters. I type in dog food. And up comes an ad right on top from Amazon. And I click on the ad, and somewhere between clicking on the ad and, and the Amazon three clicks to check out, I get distracted. I get distracted, and life happens, and then work happens, and then something else happens, and then I'm exhausted. At the end of the day, um, I'm lying down in bed, and I decide that I deserve some laughs on Facebook. Right? So I deserve to go on Facebook and look at videos and laugh. My flesh and bones, what you see in front of you right now, failed my child. I forgot to buy my child food. But those seven letters that I put into Google, my data self, it went into an algorithm. It went into Google, it went into Amazon, and then it came back into Facebook, and it tapped me on the shoulder. My data self tapped me on the shoulder and said, Hey, Ritu, bache ko khana chahiye. <laughs> right? So here it is, it's telling me that I, I need to buy food and treats and other things. So my flesh and bone self totally forgot, but my data self reminded me, and data saved the day. All right? I am flesh, bones, and data. In the last year, I spent 250 days traveling through rural India. Now, to get to rural India, I have to land in urban Indian airports. Right? So I land in urban Indian airports, and I have to go, say, to a village. And I have no idea how to get to the village. And what do I do when I have no idea? I Google it, right? So out comes Google, my almighty answer to everything. And I ask Google, how do I get to this village? Inevitably, Google says, you know, the city is not that great. The city is full of city folk. The city is full of people who are going to work, earning money, spending the money, going to educational institutions, eating golgappe on the road, don't go to the city, bypass the city. Do you realize that all of you, you city dwellers, make me miss the city? There are so many cities that I haven't seen. I don't know what the reality of urban India is. I don't know significant monuments. I don't know what a choraya in the middle of a city looks like because of you. Because you're there emitting your data, causing traffic, which causes me to bypass it. So me and my efficient way to get from A to B decide, I don't know any Indian city, your flesh, bones and data affects my reality. So I bypass the city, and the other day, I bypassed the city thinking, look at this, I'm shaving about an hour off my travel time, right? So I'm apparently rational, I choose to shave off the hour, I go through a highway. I know all the highways, you know, <laughs> really well. Um, I go through a highway and I go through a bylane. And I get to the bylane expecting to just, you know, fly past it, look at that. It's all blue, it's all perfect. And then I get stuck behind a bell, a bell gari, and a barat. 
So I'm sitting there like, Google, you've not failed me before. How could you fail me now? And there is this sense of absolute, you know, hurt almost, and disappointment when your almighty fails you. And you're there, and, and, and I actually typed into Google, why does maps not pick up Bell, Bell, Gadi, Bharat? <laughs> right? Our search terms say a lot about us. And Google came back and said, you know what, Ritu? Bell, Bell, Gadi, Bharat are flesh and bones. They are not flesh, bones, and data. So Google didn't know that they were there. So effectively, there are two types of people. They are the flesh, bones, and data people that we are. If you drive a car, if you swipe a card, if you have a bank account and transact in it enough, you're flesh, bones, and data people. And then they're flesh and bones people. I haven't always been obsessed with rural places. I lived in an urban area. I lived in Melbourne for quite a while. Um, and this was back when I was also flesh and bones. I've only become flesh, bones, and data quite recently. We've all become flesh, bones, and data quite recently. So I lived in Melbourne for a while, and in this community that I lived in, I realized everyone really liked coffee. It was easy to realize that, because on the tram from the city to my neighborhood, everyone was holding these coffee cups, you know? Apparently, they're non-biodegradable. I didn't know that back then, but anyway. So we're holding these coffee cups, and, and we're sipping coffee, and where the tram stop is for my neighborhood, a to-let sign comes up. And we're all having this banter on the tram, like, this is going to be amazing, a coffee shop's going to open up here, we can get caffeinated in the morning, we don't have to wait till we go into the city. You know, first world sort of problems. And a barber shop opened up. And we did not vote for the barber shop to open up with our dollars. We kept our dollars in our pocket. And then Adam Smith's invisible hand moved the barber shop out because it didn't make any money. And then a news agent opened up. And once again, while they were nice people, we didn't give any money to the news agent. Adam Smith's invisible hand came, picked up the news agent, and put it away. And then a bric a brac shop opened up. A bric a brac shop sells a lot of this and a lot of that. And I'm pretty certain it sold nothing because it closed down in three months. Then someone from the community came up and said, you know what, I'm just going to open a cafe. So it took four and a half years for the monetary economy of demand and supply to give me a coffee shop in my neighborhood. And eight years later, the coffee shop is still alive and buzzing. Now this is flesh and bones Ritu. Now comes me with my flesh, bones and data self. All I need to do today is pick up the phone and ask my mom, is the coffee machine working? My neighbor goes and gets a Starbucks loyalty card. Another neighbor buys coffee online. Another neighbor is on Tinder and asks someone out on a date for coffee. Right? So above our neighborhood sits a word bubble that says coffee. It's a virtual data bubble, the word coffee. And sure enough, we get a coffee shop. I didn't have to wait four and a half years for this whole thing to go through. The data that I create, the data that we created in my neighborhood collectively, gave us what we wanted. We didn't even have to participate. I was just chilling. I was just being me. I was being passive. I was going about my daily life and I got what I wanted. So my flesh, bones, and data self changes my reality without me participating. But it changes it in a really positive way for me. For me. Now, when I go to rural areas, I collect data. One might say, why do you collect data when we're flesh, bones, and data? 
Because there are people, even if they have a smartphone and geo, maybe they're not flesh bones and data because they're not producing the quantum and the type of data that we need to analyze. So I go out to a rural area and I say, I'm conducting a livestock census for myself. So I pass by and I say, village A, I don't see any goats. So in my notes, I say village A has no goats. Right? Village A, no goats. Then I come back and I put it on line and I say, village A has no goats. Then I decide that I'm a data scientist, so I shouldn't just put in facts, but I should analyze the facts. And my analysis, I just put whatever analysis I want. I say, village A does not like goats. No goats. They don't like goats. Now, one of you says, you know what? Goats are so cute. Goats are adorable. Goats taste nice. Why would someone not like goats? So you go to that village and you ask them. You actually talk to them and you say, why do you not have any goats? Because remember, I created a truth. I created a truth on behalf of them that they did not participate in. Because I'm flesh, bones, and data, and I can create data, but they can't. So you go and you question this truth, and you say, where are the goats? Why don't you like goats? And they say, you know what? This is crazy. I can't believe you're asking me that. Come with me. And they take you on a walk, and you go into this air-conditioned room. And there are these little goats chilling there, They're drinking mojitos, they're eating berries, Mozart is playing, they're having a fantastic time. And they're like, look, we love our goats so much. We really take care of our goats, right? So you come back and then you publish that truth because you're flesh, bones, and data. And now we have two parallel truths, but no absolute truth. And we create truth on behalf of people. I feel a lot of us are nervous about data. The fake news, the, the privacy issues, all of these things that we sort of get really eerie about, we're, we're not sure how to deal with them. But much like oxygen, we breathe in oxygen. We breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants breathe in the carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, and we have lived for thousands of years in this beautiful loop of existence. And now we have a parallel loop of existence where we breathe out data. Corporations, governments, and other people breathe in our data, and they breathe out data. And this loop keeps going, much like air can be polluted, and we've seen it. So can data. That doesn't stop us from breathing. There is a positive side. There is a positive side to data. Now, approximately 18% of the world is flesh, bones, and data, right? So we're at the beginning of this parallel life. We're at the beginning of this new economy, and And when any new economy starts, there are a lot of questions about who, what, where, how. But eventually, the more participation we have in this economy, the more people that come into this jigsaw puzzle, almost 7 billion, we have only 18%. When more and more people, more and more pieces enter this puzzle, the picture can be beautiful. The picture can be more democratic, the picture can be more equal, the picture can be of infinite possibilities, and we don't know. So I leave you with this thought. You are flesh, bones, and data. What are you going to do with the data that you create? What are you going to do with the data that you breathe in? And when you see a flesh and bones person, what's the truth that you create on their behalf? And when are they going to become flesh, bones, and data? Thank you.